next speaker will be uh, Dr. Rupa Kanti Biswas. Uh, he is a director as well as the senior veterinary surgeon at Netralem Eye uh, Hospitals, uh, Kolkata. He has done many veterinary surgeries, more than 8,000 to 10,000 veterinary surgeries. He has got uh, many presentations in national and international form. And he has got many prestigious awards. Among them, the one the prestigious award is the Red Buckler Award from the ESRS. And he has won many awards at the URETNA and AOS. I will be calling upon uh, Rupa Kanti Biswas to deliver his talk on OCT biomarkers in diabetic macular edema. Over to you, Rupa. Yeah, am I audible? Yeah, yeah audible. Please go okay. ahead. Uh, uh, thanks, Dr. Sunil, for giving me this opportunity and this excellent uh, you know, diabetic retinopathy. It is a need of the day. Uh, this is OCT biomarker for the diabetic retinopathy, you know, uh, is, is one of the important is just for the uh, you know general ophthalmologists who are who are uh, you know attending this session is oct biomarker is you know it is a biomarker that means you biologically uh, there are few features which we are going to discuss on the basis of oct which you know determines for the treatment of dme now just to uh, do, do a very rapid recap of different layers of you know uh, 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 retina. This is now fiber layer followed by all uh, ganglion cell layer, then inner, outer, nuclear layer, and then last comes, you know, the uh, your photoreceptor layer. Here, the most important is that ellipsoid zone and the external limiting membrane. These are the two white lines which we do see it here is one of the important part of it. So this is one of the most important, uh, uh, you know, uh, article on this topic. And the, the, actually, the pathophysiology of uh, diabetic retinopathy or the DME is a very complex thing. You know, uh, there are a lot of, uh, as we all main, mainly, we know that the VEGF is one of the most important factor, which is responsible for the development of this process. But over a period of time, we have uh, understood that there are uh, a significant role of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, uh, of the inflammatory markers as well. So how uh, these uh, OCT markers, changes actually will represent that in which scenario what is what you should do and where you should uh, you know uh, 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 inject uh, what whether anti vegf or steroid so i'll just give you an example for that this is a hyperreflective spots this is and the presence of subretinal fluid in the subfobial area so this is this is one of the important prognostic marker so how does it uh, you know help us in 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 this way so these hyperreflective spot, as you as you, I'll show you later also. These are, are the main characteristic of that. They will have a, you know, number one, they have a very small size, usually less than thirty micron size, and the reflectivity usually similar to the nerve fiber layer which I have shown you earlier, and there is no backscattering. So by this way, you can differentiate whether it is a hard exudate or it is actually the hyperreflective spots. So the, here is example of those hyperreflective spot. I think you are you can see those. Uh, I have just uh, marked it here. So all those are hyperreflective spot, uh, and uh, they and in presence of hyperreflective spot, uh, this is an indication that uh, the, the, these these are the patient who is having a little more uh, uh, preponderance for uh, having the more cytokines, and the, and and these people are respond well for the dexamethasone implant uh, as reported in, in different cases. We'll show you this is a post, post treatment uh, with the dexamethasone implant. You can see but there is still presence of some amount of the hyperreflective spots, but which has been reduced from the previous one. So with this increase, there is an increased interest of uh, there are associated with hyperreflective spots are there is increased a, 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 a foveal autofluorescence area. In, in and and the presence of sub uh, sub uh, uh, foveal uh, fluid so this increased autofluorescence of the central area which also decreases after treatment and this is supported by microperimetry so if you you can see these changes in the in the initial pre treatment in the microperimetry is this red area which has been converted to yellowish and yellow and uh, in the uh, green uh, green area and this is one of the important you know documentation for the changes occurring post treatment when you have the hyperreflective spot and increase autofluorescence external limiting membrane and ellipsoid zone analysis is one of the uh, another now next level so the most important uh, here is you know here you can see the different level of the changes it, it these changes does not occur in one day so uh, you have to have uh, you know uh, uh, the, 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 the image A, which is showing, you know, 
there is no disruption of the ELM and ellipsoid zone. You can hear subfovial area. There are partial uh, disruption in this area. And in last uh, uh, scenario, there is totally disruption and there is disorganization of the uh, uh, of the layers, uh, uh, retinal layers as well. So the DME of the ellipsoid zone here, another example of you can see these are the ellipsoid zone and photoreceptor loss. So in these kind of cases, even if you treat them successfully or reduce the intra uh, retinal fluid, also the visual outcome may not be good. So this is how we prognosticate our cases before giving uh, intravitreal injection. This is dis disorganization of uh, retinal uh, inner layers. This is another important uh, fact, another important prognostic marker for this. But you know, uh, the, this is this is this also does not occur in, in in one day. So these are all changes occur over a period of time. So if you can catch them at the earliest possibility, so that you can reverse it back as well. You can see in in this left side A picture, there is a disorganization disorganization of the retinal layers in this area but here later on later this part you still have some amount of the delineation of the retinal architecture in this area vis-a-vis uh, -vis you have there is no uh, in this area you can though there is a presence of a significant amount of the interretinal fluid compared to here but here the drill is not present here in this area all the layers you can make out almost uh, uh, though it is a compressed but you can make it out so in this way this is a this is one of the uh, uh, important prognostic factor so that obviously the left side the, the side the b uh, a, uh, patient will will have a better outcome after treatment so uh, as you can see in the initial phases if you can detect them so in the baseline in in this picture there is uh, uh, over a period of eight months time so initially there was intraretinal fluid which is but there is no no uh, initial minimal amount of the drill in this area present but once you treat this drill also uh, resolved to some extent and the fluid also has gone and later on you can uh, after around eight months time there is a significant restoration of the vision and the retinal architecture as well this is a, a case where uh, you know a presence of uh, com combination of all those area this is hyperreflective spots are present here you can see the eyes uh, iso junction and the elm that area is intact presence of subretinal fluid with presence of localized area of drill so this is uh, in 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 one uh, you know a picture you can uh, make out all those parameters so this is in short about uh, treatment for the uh, uh, medical treatment and now the surgical outcome via marker so if you have a vmt in presence of uh, dme so in those situation it is difficult to treat them only with anti vgf or the steroid so unless until you release that uh, vitromacular attraction this patient is not going to uh, you know do well so we need to we need to uh, uh, keep on uh, um, keep this thing in mind and then treat accordingly but even in presence of uh, 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 vitromacular attraction or in an advanced stage of diabetic retinopathy here you can see there is a significant disruption of the photoreceptor so in this a and b so pre-treatment and post-treatment you can see that this area of ellipse uh, there is a significant improvement and this area there is a disruption of the ellipsoid zone so there is not much of even after treatment also there is hardly any improvement even after doing perspinal vitrectomy with ilm peeling so uh, this is another uh, area of presence of epiretinal membrane again the the whole uh, central part of the retina is being pulled up so even if you treat them with so much of you know multiple anti vgf injection also it does not improve but if you, if you treat them at the earliest possibility before change in the ez and uh, external limiting membrane so you can uh, you can have a better result but uh, if you land up of having this area destroyed in the subfovial area you can achieve the anatomical success the visual outcome is not that great so uh, in brief to uh, uh, talk about the oct oct octa biomarkers i think dr uh, uh, sunil will be talking about on this topic but most important i just wanted to uh, re-emphasize there are a few things foveal avascular zone area foveal avascular zone contour integrity average vascular caliber uh, vessel tortuosity and vessel density these are the parameters we usually look for you know like here look 
in 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 any uh, OCT biomarker, octa biomarker. But out of these areas, you know, the first two is not of much of importance, so uh, does not make any difference. Average versus caliber is also can give you a false result when you know the uh, capillaries are gone and the vessels, the larger vessels are there, so you can have them. I'll just finish. Uh, 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 but most importantly, vessel density in the paraphobial area is an important marker. I just acknowledge uh, uh, the, uh, the effort of Dr. Nandi, Dr. Maitra, and Dr. Mahato. Thank you. Thank you, Rupak.